National Monetary Fund assures to meet on Nigeria's $3.4 billion loan request. And World Bank donates $82 million to Nigeria to help fight COVID-19, just as fire destroys parts of Accountants General's office this Wednesday. And oil prices rise on the hope for OPEC meeting on output cuts. This is Business Express reaching you from Abuja, Nigeria's capital on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. I am Amina Nujem and glad to have you join us today. down parts of the Treasury building housing the office of the Accountant General of the Federation at the early hours this Wednesday. Minister of State Budget and National Planning Clement Agba visited the building while the fire was being curtailed, said no serious damage was done to the Treasury House. About uh, 10 minutes past uh, 10 this morning and they responded within uh, four minutes with uh, three fire trucks. However, uh, there was a little bit of difficulty in getting inside the, the building because they thought they should fight the fire both from outside and then from uh, inside. But they eventually broke uh, inside to fight the fire and when they saw the extent of it, they called for help. And uh, all together, 25 uh, fire trucks uh, were used to fight the fire and within 35 uh, minutes, the fire was put under control. We have uh, gone around the, the rooms, uh, the offices where the fires are, are affected. And I'm glad to report to you that our data center, where all our records are kept, they are fully intact. There is no destruction. So we haven't lost uh, any record. Uh, I also should uh, remind you that for a while now we have really gone digital, so yet we have some documents that are kept manually, but a lot of what we do is uh, online. And even if the data center were to be affected, we have a backup uh, center that is outside of uh, Abuja for recovery in the event that we lose uh, the data uh, center. The only thing that has happened to the data center is the exterior, where we have the cooling, uh, that's the cooling unit at the, at the back, to make, because the data center always have to be, be cool. And the International Monetary Fund, IMF, has promised swift attention to Nigeria's request for a $3.4 billion credit facility in support of its fight against the deadly coronavirus pandemic. The managing director of the IMF, Kristalina Georgieva, noted that the impact of the pandemic, which has threatened the Nigerian economy as a result of the shocks associated with sharp falls in international crude oil prices. The IMF also noted the very various interventions adopted by the Buhari administration to contain the spread of the virus and its impact on the economy. Following the outbreak of the virus, also known as COVID-19, crude oil prices was drastically forced down to about $30 per barrel. And as a result, the Nigerian government reviewed the underpinning projection for the year. The Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, says, 
With projected oil revenue significantly affected, the Nigerian government was compelled to revise the benchmark oil price for 2020 from $57 per barrel to $30. She said government resolves to adjust downward its non-oil revenue projections, including various tax and customs receipts, as well as proceeds from the privatization exercise. And in a related development, the World Bank says it is donating $82 million to strengthen Nigeria's public health in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. The development was disclosed in a statement released by the World Bank Group. Nigeria was excluded from the first set of beneficiaries of the World Bank COVID-19 Emergency Health Support Program, which was inaugurated last week following approval by the bank's board of executive directors. The emergency support program is aimed at strengthening developing countries' response. Meanwhile, oil bounced back on Wednesday with oil crude jumping over $1 lifted by hopes that a meeting between OPEC members and allied producers on Thursday will trigger output cuts to shore up prices that have crumbled amid the coronavirus pandemic. Brent crude was put at 57 cents or 2.4 percent at $32.62 per barrel in early trading after falling 3.6 percent on Tuesday. U.S. West Texas intermediate crude rose 1.3 dollars to 24.93 dollars to a barrel after dropping 9.4 percent in the previous session saudi arabia opec member countries and russia are likely to agree to cut oil output but that accord would be dependent on whether the united states would go along with the cuts and still talking commodities, world food prices declined in March, driven mostly by demand-side contradictions linked to the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic and the drop in global oil prices as governments roll out measures to respond to the crisis. This was in a statement released by the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations. Meanwhile, prices of staple grains, rice and wheat have gained recently as coronavirus outbreak is limiting labor availability and prompting countries to stockpile even though overall supplies are ample. Let's see how commodities are faring. Samson Galandima, an economist, joins us via Skype to examine the prospects for the oil market ahead of the OPEC Plus meeting and Nigeria's budget adjustment as part of initiatives to address COVID-19 concerns in Nigeria. Hello, Mr. Samson. Hello, Amina. I hope Hi. you are staying safe. Of course, I'm. Thanks for asking. Now, let's start the conversation this way. Saudi Arabia, OPEC members and Russia are meeting on Thursday via video conferencing to discuss um, possible production cuts. Do you see this um, likely happening? Well, um, Russia and um, Saudi Arabia have been engaged in a game of chicken because um, um, Saudi Arabia wanted cuts in supply in, in the production of oil, so as to prop up the the prices on the international market. Unfortunately, Russia was not willing to 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 cut the supply, and Saudi Arabia decided to flood the international oil market with um, so much oil, so as to ensure that they don't lose market share. The fear of Saudi Arabia. Um, is that if they cut supply, they may eventually lose market share. And when they lose market share, they are going to lose their power. They are going to lose their leverage on the international market. 
Okay, now um, let's talk about um, concerns. So whether the United States is going to join in. Do you see them cooperating with OPEC? I think it's in the best interest of the United States to join. Um, OPEC alone has realized that it's impossible to, to pop up a global oil prices. That was why they invited countries like Russia, which they call the oil plus. And even with Russia, the, the, they are limited and they need the Americans. The American shell oil industry is uh, being pummeled by the threat by the catering of the international oil price. So they, they too, it serves the interest of the Americans to join, and I think they will likely join. Trump had to talk to, to Saudi Arabia, to the Crown Prince, to ensure that this meeting is called. So if um, OPEC Plus or OPEC Plus Plus will need the Americans to join, I'm sure they will gladly join, because it's in, also in their own best interest to do so. Okay, the OPEC plus them, they had a meeting in early March talking about um, cutting outputs. And there are speculations that um, this particular meeting is likely going to be more successful than the one held in March. Do you agree with that? Yes, I think so. Because um, when the last time they met, the price of oil on the national market had not this... Um, but wasn't this low. It has um, gotten worse from that time till now. And then it was basically between OPEC and um, <coughs> Russia. Now the Americans are involved. So it's likely going to yield some results now because so many parties are involved. So many parties have realized that by flooding the international oil market with oil, everybody stands to lose. So everybody, I'm sure, will try to see if they can rescue the situation. Well, you did make mention of how volatile the market is. It's, um, some observers have described it more like a wait-and-see kind of thing. Now, looking forward in the coming weeks, whether the United States agrees to join, whether they cut output or not, how do you see the price of oil in the coming weeks? Um, depending on the outcome of this meeting, if the outcome is um, really favorable, favorable in the sense that they are going to cut supplies, they are going to cut output, prices will likely go up. But if the meeting ends in a deadlock and nobody wants to agree to the terms, then prices will likely plunge the more. Okay, now let's come back home to Nigeria. The federal government is um, talking about a stimulus plan. What do you make of this, the decision to cut output and cap rates at $30 per barrel? Well, I, I think um, Nigeria has no choice. They are compelled. Nigeria is compelled by the circumstances beyond um, its control. We are so much dependent on oil, and it's not good. It's a serious albatross around our neck. We need to diversify our economy. We have been paying lip service to the diversification of the Nigerian economy. And um, I think this should be a clarion call. This should uh, make the Nigerian government and possibly the population to, to sit up and realize that dependence on oil is, is a big minus for us. And um, cutting down the benchmark is something that um, the government has no choice. They have no choice. They have to cut it down because what they had before wasn't possible. It wasn't tenable. And um, I think for the palliatives, um, I remember the Americans having an economic stimulus, the equivalent of 10% of GDP. That's over 2.2 trillion fiscal stimulus alone, apart from the monetary stimulus. 10% uh, of Nigeria's GDP would be like $40 billion. $40 billion is almost twice the size of the current budget. So Nigerian government, whatever they do, so far what they have said, the palliatives they have mentioned, they have proposed, they are just a drop in the bucket. They, they won't have much impact on the economy. Okay, looking forward in the next, say, three, three to six weeks with the fall in revenue, with um, projections falling below 400 million, what do you see happening? And Nigeria, unfortunately, is in a big mess. 
a serious mess. Our economy is in trouble, not only because of um, for plunging of the international oil price, but because of the coronavirus. Uh, there is a demand shock and there is supply shock. We cannot sell our oil. We cannot. The economy is on total lockdown. You cannot. You can hardly buy. You can hardly sell. So the economy is in a serious shamble. It's in a tail spin. And it will only take the grace of God for us to actually get out of this mess. Now, in terms of your solutions, what would you suggest to the federal government? I think um, in the meantime, what we can do is limited. The space is actually not much uh, about what the government can do. They can only borrow for now to fix the economy. I advise um, an, an expansionary economic policy, expansionary fiscal policy. They should spend some more to prop up the economy. They should cut taxes. They should um, ensure more transfers to the most vulnerable in society. And also for monetary policy, they need to um, embark on expansionary monetary policy. They should cut rates. They should reduce the reserve requirement. They should embark on open market operations. I think these policies will help the economy for now. But in the long term, what we need is to stay away from oil, to diversify the economy, so that oil makes an insignificant part of our revenue or our foreign exchange earning. Okay, now, uh, Mr. Galadima, states are going to enjoy a moratorium of debt repayment, but on the whole, should um, states um, be talking about uh, meeting financial obligations? And um, do you see this current um, running dependence on FAC, do you see it gradually eroding? Um, I think the moratorium is good because you cannot be paying debts when you are in an emergency. You cannot feed your population. You, are, you have um, a public health um, crisis. So paying debts is secondary. So I think the, it's good that such a thing is being done. The government should concentrate on fighting the novel coronavirus and trying to see how they can generate um, revenue to feed the population, particularly the most vulnerable amongst the populace. Um, Samson Galadima, an economist, thank you so much for joining us on the program today. You're welcome, Amina. Thank you. Now, moving on. The total lockdown of movement is taking a toll on business activities in the FCT and other states that are affected. Akwa Ibom State is one of those states where, although shops for essential products are allowed to operate, the sellers say they are experiencing low patronage. Wisdom Jacob explains. Following the total lockdown of vehicular and human movement in the state to contain the spread of coronavirus, some businesses have come to a standstill. Although the sales of foodstuffs and other essential commodities was exempted from the lockdown, dealers on these stuffs lament of low patronage. For those whose only way of survival is to make daily sales on their businesses, the lockdown has a great effect on them. Actually, there is no patronage uh, in terms of um, what it used to be. It's only today people just manage to come out and then trying to pick one or two things for the family. For now, no business, no money, anything that we have, we are eating it without any income again. Seven days today now, my shop day locked. No money to eat. And the government cannot support us. At least it can live from A to down, all shop day locks. We're actually making sales the way we used to do. And just very few person come to the market to buy, and that is because they cannot afford to stay at home when virtually most of them are living from hand to mouth. Some, however, called on government to relax the lockdown intermittently to allow people to pick goods for their families. No, you cannot stay at home completely and then expect food to come from nowhere. And in Nigeria, like we know, Nobody will bring food 
to your doorstep to give to you. You have to go out and look for that food. May support us or to use us to help us do something. Even Nepal cannot give light. If Nepal give light, can stay home. Uh, improve on security because um, some uh, hoodlums are actually capitalizing on this lockdown order by the government to rob, to collect phones, to go to people's houses, terrorizing them. Uh, I am hungry because if I don't come to shop daily, I won't see anything to eat. Now, the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, has issued a fraud alert about criminal activities of cyber criminals who are taking advantage of the current COVID-19 pandemic to defraud citizens. The CBN gave the precaution alert in a release signed by the Director of Corporate Communications, Isaac Okorafo. The statement advised bank customers and the general public to take precaution and avoid downloading mobile apps for unknown trusted sources, get relief package information and other information from trusted media sources and beware of phone calls or emails not from trusted sources. European markets decline as hopes of imminent coronavirus recovery fade and some European countries are set to lift coronavirus lockdown measures. Benny Adams has a summary of activities on global stock markets. European stocks fell Wednesday as coronavirus worries weigh over investors and a meeting of finance ministers failed to reach an agreement to fight the crisis. The French CAC 40 dropped 1.79% after the Bank of France reportedly predicted a massive slump in activity in the first quarter. The German DAX declined 0.73%, while the FTSE dropped by 1.41%. Meanwhile, in the U.S., stock futures moved in and out of positive territory. The Dow Jones Industrial Average futures declined 1.12% to 22,653 basis points. The S&P 500 down 0.16%, as well as the Nasdaq down 0.33%. Asian shares were mostly lower, gyrating in early Wednesday trading amid uncertainty over the coronavirus outbreak, which continues to claim more lives around the world. Japan's Nikkei 225 inched up plus 2.13% in morning trading, while Hong Kong's Hang Seng dips minus 1.17, declining 1%, as well as the Shanghai Composite posting minus 0.19%, dipping 0.3%. Back home in Africa, the equities market was mostly dominated by the BS, the South Africa JSE, Africa Top 40, Kenya's Nairobi All Share Index, and Namibia Overall Index were all in negative territory. Tunisia Tun Index show an advancement of 0.56%, while Ghana JSE Composite Index stood at 2,119.40. Business Express will take a short break after which we will return. And um, details from the Nigerian Stock Exchange today shows that the stock market sustained gains with sustained a gain of 0.71%. The OSHA index stood at 21,073.26 basis point. Market capitalization stood at 10.982 billion naira, valued at 5.216 billion in 4,660 deals. The top trades were GTB, 102 million, FBN Holdings, 64 million, and Zenith Bank. 
Let's now see how the Naira is faring alongside other major currencies. And this is the point where we end this edition of Business Express. We value your feedback, so keep the comments, observations and suggestions coming. Be informed that all previous episodes are available on YouTube on NTA's channel. You can also communicate with us on Twitter and the handle is NTA News. Now, don't forget the hashtag BiscX. Remember to always wash your hands with soap and water under running water as the world battles COVID-19. Business Express returns on Friday. I am Amina Nujem. Thank you for your time.